Gmail account or like my own like uh, Yahoo account. It. Right. Account or like my own like. Uh, So I believe we're live. All right. So how is everybody doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to wait for a little bit for the live stream to show up on the back end of channel content, and then I can start uh, replying to people's chats. But for now, uh, yes. How's it going, Mike? Uh, yeah, man. I'm good. Good, and, good. Uh, lots of things have been happening in the e-reader industry like yeah. lately. A lot of stuff, a lot of products, um, just, you know, it just every month, every month we think like just when we're uh, hitting a wall with the amount of products we have, you know, four more show their face and we're like, okay, can we have samples and samples show up and it's like, wow, that's a lot of stuff we have to do. So it never seems to end. Yeah. So before we get kicked off with what we're doing on Goody Reader Live today, so we're more or less changing the format from just me and Peter talking about like the daily, you know, the weekly news every week. Uh, we're going to sort of yeah. pivot and try to do like weekly uh, streams and focus on like new e-readers that we get in the studio and answer your questions about that particular e-reader. So each show will be devoted to like one particular device and you can think of it as like a visual tour so you know uh today we have the pocketbook ink pad color which is uh the latest color uh Kalido 2 e-paper we are going to be sh answering your questions so like if you want to see anything about the device like how does a pdf look can you draw on a pdf you know, how does an ebook look? What does the front light look like? You know, you can ask us anything that you want, and we have the ink pad uh, color uh, live on Peter's end, so we can more or less get your comments and everything like that. But before we start, let's get into some news that's been happening in the last week. Um, if you've ever wondered what the library terms are uh, for major publishers, so most people kind of think that when you want to borrow an ebook or an audio book from the library that you just do it on your Kobo or you just do it like on, you know, the Libby app for Android or iOS. And you, you know, you don't really think about anything beyond that, but libraries often have to pay a lot of money just for one ebook and one audio book. You know, like if um, an ebook is $10 on Amazon for you to buy, Libraries often have to pay anywhere between sixty and one hundred twenty dollars for each book, and some have like you know twenty six circulations before they have to be repurchased, and so that's a lot of money that libraries have to pay. So we published something on our website. Uh, um, the title is "Here are the the big five publishers' terms for libraries," and it looks at every major publisher and all the different terms that they have for both ebooks and audiobooks. It's uh, worth it to check out because it's actually very interesting. Uh, Kobo issued a firmware update, so the e-readers will now save up save words you looked up in the dictionary. Uh, so if you you know look up words in the dictionary, there's a part of the Kobo now that will save all those. So you'll have that as a list. Uh, it's in the beta features, so you just have to like download the update and go into the beta uh, section and do it. Um, word has it that I'm still trying to find the change log for this. The Barnes and Noble for their Nook Low Light 3 and the Nook uh, 7.8 that was released last year. Uh, those have re released firmware updates this past week, which uh, actually adds some guided view for comics and some expanded functionality for PDF files. So this is a story that's developing now. I'm still trying to find out more information, but I'm uh, going to publish something on the website uh, about that uh, very soon. Uh, Surface Pro 8 by Microsoft is going to be launching sometime in uh, 2021. And the Samsung Galaxy uh, S8, uh, the Galaxy Tab S8 Enterprise Edition will also be uh, launched soon. 
Um, the Microsoft Surface Duo, which is their dual screen foldable phone. This is now launched in many different countries, including Europe and Canada, and the price has been reduced. So if you're thinking about getting something like that, uh, now is the time and it's running Android. Uh, where it has it, it's going to be running Android 12 uh, at some point in the near future. So you'll be able to have that. Um, yeah, uh, a new iPad Pro is, uh, there's a lot of sort of news that's coming out of that. Rumor has it that's going to be a, a, um, announced in a spring event. And we have a lot of interesting coverage um, now on our website about tablets. So if you want to learn more about uh, the tablet space, we now have uh, an author writing for us that's just writing about tablet news. So I'm going to be you know, continuing to write on like ebook and e-reader news, but we have like a few authors, new authors now that are writing about other things. So uh, our content output is doubled or tripled on our website. So new audiences and all that. So Peter, why don't you uh, answer any questions that people have? All right. Well, we have no questions. So that's a wrap, everybody. See you next week. No, we're all good. But we don't have any questions right now on the live chat. I have confirmed that the live chat is working, unlike, unlike last uh, two weeks ago when it was having a little bit of trouble. Um, well, until some questions come in, this is the ink pad color. This is the same shell and overall form factor and build quality as the InkPad 3, which is a 7.8, not the InkPad X. The InkPad X is 10.3. This one is running Kaleido 2, which is the latest color technology, as you can see right here. Now, the webcams we use are pretty high quality, but they don't have focus on them and zoom won't actually let us pull focus so um it's going to be pulling and pushing so i'll try to keep it as focused as possible uh we do have our first person that came in his name is jp he says hello awesome jp hello there so we're just gonna go look through some things this is what a pdf looks like you can tap the button at the bottom or you can swipe the page you can do pinch and zoom pinch and zoom isn't that quick it is a little bit sluggish uh, the device is the most beautiful Kaleido device we've ever seen. It, it looks better than the previous six devices. It looks better than the two that are out now. However, the InkPad is just a little bit slow because it is primarily an e-reader. There isn't any real note-taking capabilities on this, although we will show you that in a little bit. Um, we do have... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so uh, chat is now working. YouTube, we're having... YouTube was having issues, they say. Perfect. Uh, Mike, we tried to avoid it, but do you think the TCL Next paper is better than Color E Ink? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we don't know. It's, um, you know, the first TCL product, uh, right. the tablet is coming out in April. So that's still, you know, it's like what, like the, it's sort of mid February now. So it's yeah. like two or three months like away. So um, I do know that we have a number of color e-paper products coming in. Uh, I know that we have like the Big Me uh, yep. B1 Pro in our studio that we still have to do a review on. Um, we're going to be reviewing the Big Me uh, S3 uh, at some point soon. Yes. Uh, the Hisense A7CC, I think that we're getting now, if not, we have yep. it already. Hisense. Um, a few days and just to show you guys we do have the big me here but we're not showing it today one it's out of batteries and two it's not the showcase for the big me once we do the review next week we will be touching on the big me which is the first 10.3 inch note taker in color for now it is all about the uh ink pad color but we do have the big me and stay tuned next week and we will show that yeah so i mean there, there's a number of color e ink two devices that are, are out or are, are coming out soon. So um, we are going to be reviewing them all, but in relation to next paper, it's like until we actually have the product in our studio, like, and I actually can review it and compare it to color e-ink. It, it's really hard to say which one's better at this point. I would say that e-ink is more firmly entrenched in the, in the color than TCL is, which they've just developed the technology and actually right. don't have any commercial products. Right, right, right. Um, so there haven't been any questions in regards to this yet. Someone said, well, I have oh. questions. Oh, sure. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So 
how it uh, I do you have like another sort of e-reader like yes uh, I do Actually, like a, like a Kindle I, I did pull or something the Kindle out but uh, I do have to register it so while I answer some questions uh, I am going to be registering this to put this next to it because there's no there's no um content on it so yes we will be showing that in a second we do have a question kind of they said i'm really just here to whet my appetite for when books has color on a 10.3 or a lumi michael you have been talking to onyx and they said that they will not be doing a lumi color as it is too big yeah so ian Kalita to uh the support it like the color filter array so in a uh, Kalito 2 produces color by like, um, you can think of it as like a film. Uh, it's a color filter array that is sort of at the top of the screen. So I, I don't have an e-reader here, but I have like in my iPhone, I'll turn it off because that's the glare. So it's the top of the screen and it goes like all the way down. So it covers the entire screen and it just the color filter array just doesn't really work on anything beyond 10.3 inches. Uh, and the big me that Peter showed you briefly, that's the largest one that exists right now. So True. Um, what I have heard, and it's not confirmed, but Onyx is gonna be releasing uh, a Nova three color edition. So that's a 7.8. And I think it's gonna be released next month, like on like the 25th or 26th. This is just like, rumors that i've heard they haven't like confirmed me me yet and usually once they confirm with me they make me sign like an nda and i can't actually even talk about it but i could talk about it because i haven't signed anything and they haven't confirmed anything with me yet so that's just basically what's happening with that uh but yeah don't expect any 13.3s to be color uh same with like dasung monitors and stuff beyond 13 point you know 13.3 yeah. are big so i don't think das song is gonna do like color e-ink monitors i don't think anything beyond 13.3 at least for this generation now it's just, it's just too big yeah um that's why this is the first time we have seen a, a, an e-reader or any sort of electronic reader expand past the six inch um size form factor because it's just never happened before now uh, we do have a couple people say uh, really white color will be most white question mark this is a gentleman from russia so uh, i do commend you on your english skills because i can't speak a word in russian um yes this is as white as it will get this is glow light uh i believe we're glow light off uh turn off the front light yes Okay, so that was already zero, but yeah, this is glow light off, and this is as white as it will get. It is leaps and bounds against last gen, and you guys can check our YouTube channel to see that. And we are going to be doing a uh, YouTube video on uh, the pocketbook color versus the ink pad color, but you will see the background has definitely become more white, and you will see that obviously one of the reasons you would get this is to take advantage of color. So in ebooks, majoritively you're not going to be using color; it's just black and white. But if you do highlighting, oh, I didn't turn the page right there. You do see you can choose highlighting from four different colors, and funnily enough, if you overlap the colors like red and blue, you do get purple. So it's pretty interesting that you can you can even do that it would just be long pressing on the device like so and then you get your color palette that shows up which is blue red slash kind of pink and then yellow and a green a kind of a, a forest green okay so i know that we don't have the pocketbook color here yet we're getting it next yeah. week um yeah. and we're going to be covering we're going to be doing a, a like a, a comparison between the pocketbook color, which is the first generation Kaleido on a six inch screen versus this on a 7.8. Now, you know, you have extensively reviewed the pocketbook color. So you have like a good frame of reference. How right. has the grayscale on black text on a, on a, on a, you know, sort of a gray background, how has that improved from like the pocketbook color? Very much so. The pocketbook color was in the same realm as the iReader C6, the iFlyTech, and the background here, all the white portions were very blue and gray and everything would shine this weird mix of little blue and gray and green pixels that try to make 
white and that try to make gray. This has all since been corrected and you can definitely tell, like if we go to something like apps and then we go to, uh, we'll go to the gallery. This this is really nice because they had some preloaded imagery here for everybody. You could just see how how nice that looks. I mean, that just looks like you're looking at, it's not quite like an LCD LED tablet, of course. This is still e-ink, but that's pretty nice. We haven't seen anything like that leading up until this point for the past six iterations of Kaleido 1, but this just looks great. Look at that. That looks so good across all colors, across all hues, across all saturations. Look at the color vibrancy. And this is the glow light off. I don't have any actual light right now. This is just ambient room light that we're using in uh, my home office here because you know the whole Corona thing haven't been working on site mostly, but um, yes, uh, we do have a couple of questions actually. Does the higher resolution make the ever present background color dots appear smaller, less obtrusive, question mark? Yes, because um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, uh, Kaleido 2 still uses 100 PPI for the color, yes? Yeah, so... Right. Yeah, so every time you expand 100 PPI to a larger device up upwards of the Big Me, you are getting a more diluted, fuzzy, zoomed-in experience. So it does look better on smaller devices like the InkPad Color, like the Hisense A7, the, the um, potential Onyx products that are most definitely going to be coming out at some point this year. I mean, it's Onyx, come on. But <clears throat> there is there's just something to be said with a tighter screen. 7.8 seems to be a good medium right now because it's very compact. 10.3 is a little bit larger, so you are blowing it up a little bit. Yeah, so 7.8 and 6. Point, uh, like 6.0 uh, and even the high sense phones, uh, they're all black and white 300 PPI. So anything with a 300 PPI black and white like screen, uh, anything with like black text and like white background or gray background uh, or like a night mode type of thing are always going to look awesome. Uh, Colors also on those screens will look good. Blown like a 10 inch blown up, you really have to like do like optimization for it to like work right. So, like, say, like, um, I'm not going to talk about other devices because we're kind of focused on like the ink, uh, ink pad color today. Yeah. But if you look at just the home screen, and I mean, it's really sort of hard to gauge how accurate the color is because like we're on Zoom, you know, it's the best the, the, we can do. It's yeah. like the, the, you know, the focus isn't that great. We can't really like see the colors on like the screen as well as you can, you know, in the studio. But yeah. From what I understand, colors on this screen look good. Same with like colors on bigger screens that will look good. The smaller the color image is. So like with the carousel that you see like uh, there, uh, like at the bottom of the screen, um, you know, sort of like the best sellers and stuff. Those look good because they're smaller images. And I have like a feeling that on bigger screens, you know, app icons will look good. If you load in like an Android app, you know, maybe the UI is colored, maybe like certain aspects of what you're seeing are color, but it's not color the entire screen. Like you're looking at one single image, like when you went to the gallery and like opened up some of those images on seven point or on like a 7.8, that's going to look good. But on a very large display, it is going to look, I think, a little bit more diluted as we right. saw like with the big me. So right. why don't like, you know, as people are before they ask questions, why don't uh, you we, we do have a lot of questions. Yeah, oh, actually. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's OK. Uh, someone said, uh, when will there be more color? Um, I'm thinking never. No, actually. Uh, uh, again, that's the Russian gentleman. I can't pronounce your name. It has like a backwards and in it but uh yeah there's lots of color devices there's a total of eight on the market right now nine if you count the high sense a7 that hasn't been released yet so there are about nine devices right now that are running color there are a great deal of color devices someone says why is it taking amazon so long to release color e-reader does color e-ink affect battery life i'll answer the battery life thing first um right now color is not necessarily active it's more of a passive layer you can't turn it off or on or anything like that it's mostly just the light passes through it so it doesn't really affect the battery at all no 
Um, but Michael, why is Amazon taking so long to release a color device? Uh, okay, so I think it's just like, okay, so Try to, yeah. I, 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 I think the problem is, is like, um, why hasn't Kobo done it? Why hasn't Barnes and Noble done it? Why is it just like basically like Chinese companies and like, you know, companies like in Europe that are doing it, but no big retailers doing it. Uh, companies like Pocketbook could just take risks and, you know, um, their technology. Uh, yeah. I mean, smaller companies could take bigger risks. You know, like Onyx is not Amazon. You know, they don't have the market share. They don't have the revenue. Same with Pocketbook. They're a smaller company. They just, Pocketbook just does e-readers, you know. Amazon does a million things, you know. And Alexa devices make them the most money. AWS makes them the most money. Kindle is just something that, like, they they did, like, very early on. Like, they, they basically made the e-reader mainstream. And, like, over the years, competition has, like, not brought out the better in them. You know, if anything, it's made them more cautious in embracing, like, new technologies. Like, they never even, like, released a waterproof e-reader to, like, the Kindle Paperwhite 4, which came yeah. out in 2018. Can you believe it? Amazon took, it, it took them, like, literally six or seven years from when e-readers were first waterproof to Amazon first doing waterproof. You know, it's just, like, they're not going to do color until like everyone else does color standard. And I don't think they're going to do color until like Kobo or Barnes and Noble does color. That's um, right. But I have a feeling that like, they're not going to use Kalido. Uh, they are going to use something that I discovered, uh, which is um, okay. So it's called, if you guys have like read our website at any time, in the past like four or five years, we've made a lot of posts about, about uh, EA advanced color e-paper. And this was initially designed like about five years ago for like digital signage. And um, it was basically like not a color filter array. It was um, by uh, using colored pigments uh in a single layer of electrophoretic fluid uh which is controlled using voltages com uh compatible with commercial tft back pains so the fluid can be incorporated into either micro capsules or micro cup stretch structures basically e-ink has developed a second generation of e-ink color e-paper for like digital signage but then they also created something called E-Ink Gallery 4100. And E-Ink, like, would not even talk to me about this. Like, it's so secret right now that they haven't talked to me at all about it. But apparently, this technology uh, could display 40,000 colors. Whereas what you're seeing on screen now, 4,000 colors. So I believe that E-Ink Gallery 4100, uh, E-Ink is sending out those panels right now. Everyone has them. So like uh, Amazon has them, uh, Kobo, Barnes & Noble has them. I know this for sure that they have them. Uh, even like smaller companies, like uh, the guys that made the uh, Mobile Scribe, uh, Mobile Nectro yeah. Nectronics has them. So Nectronics makes Nooks and Kobos. They have it. So basically everyone has this right now. But the problem is, is that it's not going to be in a commercial product until sometime next year. So if, you know, to answer your question in a long about way, I think Amazon, if they're going to do a color e-reader, they're not going to use Kalido 2. They're going to use advanced color e-paper gallery 4100, which isn't even going to be ready until next year. All right. Would apply... Oh, what, oh, I see. Would Apple try a color one? Um, Apple doesn't make e-readers at all or any sort of e-ink technology whatsoever. They strictly make uh, very kind of cookie cutter tablets and um, uh, smartphones. They're mostly, if not entirely, a device manufacturer that centers around LCD LED, so they don't do anything else. Uh, someone says, 
what do we got here? Oh, will there be a 300 DPI slash PPI color e-ink? At this point, because the color array filter, which is the filter laying over everything else, is not active with a ribbon cable and a little switch on the side where you can toggle on and off. No, it is not possible yet with Kaleido. And someone else asked something that refers to that. Uh, Bal Bilal Tahir said, and we touched on it a little bit while uh, Michael was explaining, does the e-ink degrade the experience of reading black and white? Does the color e-ink de degrade the experience of black and white? Yes, because all these little pixels, like right around there, they're using color to make a white background, which means you're getting hues of green and little specks of gray and dots of blue. And it just doesn't look as good as an official e-ink device like that, like the Kindle. Um, we actually, uh, I, I gave this to one of our, um, uh, one of our, our guys here and we tried to get this um, registered, but for some reason it's not taking the Wi-Fi, which is really weird. But anyways, if you just look at the backgrounds, you will see how much more blue this is. Although the ink pad color is way better than the last gen of Kaleido, you will just see how different it is between a white background or, you know, white, as white as you can get on an e-reader. This is, is the light crazy. on, on the they're Kindle? both off. Okay. Yeah. So you have a white background and a kind of gray background. And this is just, this is as good as it gets with color, but it is no black and white e-reader. So that is just the reality of the situation is that yes, the, 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 the color device is trying to make white how do you make white with colors well you, you space out you know grays blacks whites uh blues and greens until you get something that looks like white and that's just what it's trying to do but it's trying to do that kind of constantly so yeah that's a little bit of a problem with color right now is that people are i mean we did a, a history on color we did a top four uh, we did a um uh, a four point explanation on what is different between Kaleido one and Kaleido two there's a lot that is going on here. It just looks like, oh, I'm having this device and it's a color. There's a lot at work. There's a lot of factors at play happening right now to make this with color. And this is still e-ink. It's not an LCD screen. It's not refreshing 120, uh, 30 to 120 times a second. It only uses battery when you do something like that. It is still very much e-ink. So that's just what's kind of happening there. Uh, another question came in, sorry. Uh, is there an Android e-reader? Uh, I, I'm I'm assuming you mean color, in which case, yes, there are several. Hisense makes Android e-readers. iFlyTech and iReader out of China all make Android e-readers and Onyx. In fact, 90% of the devices on the market are um, Android, and only very few of them are Linux. Actually, this is... The only the one. Thing. Actually, yeah, now that I'm questioning myself, it is the only one. Even the Big Me that came out uh, this year is uh, Android, Android 8.1. You can put Android on it. I, we've already put the Google, uh, the Goody Reader um, uh, app store on there and a couple other apps. Uh, yes, it, most of them are Android now that I'm kind of breaking it down. Someone said, what about battery life? Because again, the color is a passive filter for the most part. Uh, we don't obviously know the teardowns of if anyone is sending power via ribbon cables, but for the most part, because you can't turn it off and on, you can't adjust any color settings, no e-reader, no device out of the nine that are available have any color settings. There's nothing to pertain to the actual color itself. Yeah, so it's not a separate what, what, device. what he's basically saying is that a color e-reader has the same battery life as like a, a black and white Kindle or a black and white Kobo. You know, some, you might get a little bit extra battery life out of your Kindle, but that's just because like Amazon has a lot of money to devote towards like optimizing it for like maybe getting an extra four or five days of battery life just because of like Amazon engineers at R&D. Pocketbook, smaller company, but you know, I would probably say that all pocketbook e-readers have pretty well have the same battery life, but this actually has a larger battery by about a thousand milliamps than the pocketbook color. So, uh, and it has a thousand, uh, I think it has like 1400 milliamps or something. 
uh, better than the pocketbook color. So, or, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the, like sort of the ink pad color on the screen, it has the same shell as the ink pad three. And this device actually has a bigger battery than the InkPad 3, just because like Pocketbook knows that on a color e-reader, you'll probably be reading uh, more than just eBooks. You'll be surfing right. the web in color. You'll be looking at manga more. You'll be looking at webtoons online. So Pocketbook knows that with color devices, the people are going to be reading for longer and reading like more mixed media. So they included right. a bigger battery just so people would actually have uh, like three to four weeks of usage out of it, using it for like five to 10 hours, like a day. Right. If, you know, and that's on like the higher end. Let's just give you guys a little bit of an example of the technology as we know it. It's basically a thin film like this. I only, I didn't prepare this. I just thought of this right now. So I only have a few colors on hand. It's basically a grid of squares. If you look at all the Kaleido, you know, tech and uh, our history of color e-ink, it's a thin filter like this with a bunch of squares and colors over it like that. And then when they put the color filter array over a regular e-reader, everything's still passing through as you can see it's still passing through however you see color because well there's this is obviously very blown up it's much microscopically smaller and that's how you're able to get the color so having a passive filter like that just laying over the e-reader doesn't use any additional batteries however again we've never done teardowns so we don't know if they have any sort of mechanics or we should do a teardown we should do a teardown because why this is important because out of the nine devices so far only onyx has been able to turn off the color and if it is indeed as e-ink has told us a passive filter then logistically you should not be able to turn that off but they seem to have been able to choose whether or not to use it when you enter x mode on the onyx which doesn't make sense based on all of the diagrams we've been supplied if indeed they're using a color filter you shouldn't ever be able to turn it off unless you open the device and you rip it off the screen so we should yeah it's actually a pretty good idea we should do a teradon on one because if indeed it, that's the way it is then yeah it, it isn't using any additional batteries so that's that's the beauty of color is that you're getting color you get manga you get pdfs and and cover art and highlighting and note taking but you don't use any additional battery because there's no additional battery to be used. And it's important to note that the color filter array is using RGB. So it's using that sort of color palette. It's not using like CMKY or something, what it is like. Cyan, uh, magenta, yellow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's using RGB. So it's using a limited amount of colors, but it, it's able to display 4,096 different colors. Uh, based on mixing colors, like on sort of like a, yeah, but it, it's basically just like what Peter sort of described, like, you know, on, except infinitesimally smaller. Um, I oh, have yeah. a question. Can you, can you show yeah. us like uh, all of the different menus, like library yeah. store and like, tell us like a little bit about what we can expect from like the device. We have a couple more questions first, and then I will get into that when we hit a lull. Someone says, does it run Android? Yes, it does. Uh, not this one, but every other device does run Android. Is the 100 PPI something really noticeable? Yes, it will be. If you do open up uh, PDFs and images, you will see that it is a little bit fuzzy. Now, again, this is the best showcase we can do internationally to all corners of the world. We have people from Canada to France to Portugal to Russia joining us. This is the best we can do. You know, our, our webcams are $200 a pop. We're not skimping out on quality. So when we show you this, this is the best we can show you. It is a little bit fuzzy if you compare it to say a black and white e-reader showing you the same thing, which we will do a video on. So yes, the 100 PPI is a little bit of a trade-off. Um, does Color E-Ink have glass on the screen or is it like Onyx, no glass? Um, it could use glass or yeah, no the, glass. The like I fly it, it tech could, it could and the high sense. Yeah, the high, I fly tech and the high sense have glass and the iReader, Pocketbook, and Onyx do not have glass. It has nothing to do with the color itself because the color is the e-ink screen with a color filter array. Everything else you put on top of that 
is extra touch layer capacitive layer note taking wacom layer uh you can put a screen protector and that's why when we show you guys a 10.3 versus 6 uh, 7.8 in the future video you will see that this is a little more fuzzy because there's so much more stuff in front of the screen and your eyes and your eyes so the more things you physically mechanically put between the viewable surface and your eyes, the worse it looks. Uh, one more question here. How does the color filter know which color to show based off of a passive filter? Well, see, that's the thing that everything that has been supplied to us has told us that the color filter is passive. There's no settings in here that will allow you to do anything with color across any company, iReader, iFlyTech, anybody. No one will have like color on or off, nobody. Onyx somehow is able to turn the color off, but not with a direct toggle. So we don't actually know. We haven't gotten a definitive answer that says this yeah. is this and that. So E-Ink has like refused to tell us anything about That's the inner workings exactly of Kalido 2. They won't sell vendors the color filter array. Like, so if like, say, hey, you know, uh, me, uh, Peter and I, I was gonna say me and Peter, but I'm like, whatever, that whatever. doesn't even like, is not grammatically correct. So Peter and I want to create a color e-reader. So we want to get like Kalido 2 with like a, a you know, uh, you know, a, a screen with Kalido 2 and like a ribbon cable to plug into like a logic board and like use like a Drino or, you know, Python or do into like a Raspberry Pi. e right now won't even sell it. Like they won't sell it right now to anybody. They just like have agreements with specific companies to provide them with like development kits, but they won't sell Kalido 2. They'll do Kalido 1, but they won't do Kalido 2. So it's like impossible to know the inner workings because e Ink doesn't like have any white papers like outlining the technology because they don't want like people to steal like their tech like and, and develop competing products. Um, they're not going to tell media companies the inner workings of it. Like they promised they'd tell me in December, but they never did. And I asked them about it. They're like, yeah, we're not going to tell you about how this works. So it's like, I wish we could answer these questions, but it's like legit, like they don't tell anybody and like they don't even sell these to like normal people. Right. Yeah, uh, that's exactly it. And a gentleman here, Moof says the only, the only knows which pixel, I guess the only thing I know, or they only know which pixels are RGB and which ones are black in X mode. It needs to draw less. So it just switches off the RGB pixels. See, that is a theory because if it is indeed the exact same technology as a screen protector, which is a film of plastic, you can't switch off a screen protector. I can't turn my screen protector on and off. If it is connected with a ribbon cable to the PCB, that has inner workings to allow some sort of toggle via hardware, via software, then yes, you could turn it off. But if what they're saying is that it is just a filter with no cables, you can't turn that off. There's no way to do that. So yeah, that's the, I, that's I, have, I, have a, I have a feeling that it has something to do with like the standard refresh rate of like an EN cage. Whereas like Onyx bypass like standard refresh modes with like, their X mode, which exponentially increase like the like the screen refreshing, yeah. like so. I, I don't uh, I don't know offhand. I don't think anybody really knows. No. Like what? How many? Like what is the standard refresh rate on an e ink e reader? Is it how many frames per second, or you know, frame per second does it do when uh, electrophoric electrophoric like you know the 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 you know the positively and negatively charged uh, e ink particles. What is like the refresh rate between when state changes on a screen? Yeah, right. Like uh, we we you know the deduction reasonably say it does it in like three or something. Right. Onyx's X mode would like increase that from like three to twelve. Um, just as an arbitrary type of like number. So I think that it bypassed the color filter array because it sort of like took the standard refresh rate and right. just put it on crack. And I think that just basically like the color filter array couldn't handle that. 
Yeah, well, yeah, uh, that's 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 a good point. But then by that logic, it would have to be plugged in because you can't bypass something you put over the screen. If I put that over the screen, you can't get around that without somehow plugging it in and telling it to switch off. The pixels dissipate. If this is physically on the screen, as they've told us, you can't bypass that. It needs to be plugged in. But well, that is it's true you know what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to like take apart like one of those cheap chinese ones that like we have no <laughs> use for anymore that's right like, the ones the... that don't allow you to even sign in without a mainland chinese phone number yeah like uh you know with this pocket book one i i would see us doing like more comparisons oh more, yeah for sure more, more stuff like in the future whereas with those like crappy chinese ones that we have that like don't sell on our store and nobody really cares about i yeah. think we could probably take that apart in such a way that we could like get a chance to like basically look at the color filter array like how thin it is what it actually looks like i think doing like a teardown like video will actually be pretty cool because yeah. like it would be it would it would be something I would be interested in because, like, I have no idea how the color filter array is. It is it plugged in with a ribbon cable? Is it actually? Uh, is it is is it, so? Is the e ink screen and the color filter array? If it is, are they independent? Like, if That's if right. they are charged, like if they are like both attached to a logic board, are they attached to like the same ribbon cable? Like, you know. Uh, yeah, Leo we get it. Yeah. And is it plugged one. in or is it is it not? If yeah, it, if it is a, a passive filter. How are people getting around it? Yeah, that would need to be uh, addressed at some point. And because no one gives us any information, we'll have to kind of do it ourselves. But you do have styluses of what have a lot of people have been talking to us about. And since we've done our videos, we've actually stole, sold about 15 styluses. Not today on our chat here, but we did have some emails saying. Why are you able to do Wacom note taking on it? Well, I want to just nip that in the bud. This actually isn't Wacom. Whether I use, for example, this is an active capacitive digitizer, meaning if I use this on my phone or if I use this on here, it's going to be the exact same thing as my finger. All this does is pinpoint right to the tip exactly what your finger would be doing it's just a use of translation instead of me using my sloppy finger oh i can't get to the accuracy they allow you to use a stylus you can go and go like that what we have been selling a lot of actually is the goody reader stylus as well the goody reader stylus comes with i'm gonna do a little bit of a um a little bit of a pitch here the okay goody i'm gonna stylus. do something cool comes with a bunch of nibs and uh yeah this can be used as well it's a metal mesh and you can tap the screen like this and you can do note taking and coloring and all that fancy schmancy stuff whether you use your finger or you use your stylus it's the exact same thing so don't get too excited about this having a uh, note taking to the point where it's like a wacom device it's not and as we showed you earlier when we were scribbling on the screen this is just using my finger but it's just a stylus instead of it but you know it does a good job it honestly does a pretty good job. You can see here, I'll choose another color and they overlap the colors well. They don't blend, you know, they don't get any weird pix pixelation or anything like that. It is actually quite a very nice experience. We were quite, we were, we were pleasantly surprised. Now, this is nothing comparing to the an actual Wacom note taker like this, which we will be getting into. This is a real note taker. This is the guy that's going to be, you know, Wacom enabled with a transmitter via your pen that you're going to get in the box. This is just simulating your fingers. So if I choose green, choose green on the screen, it's going to be the same thing, whether I use an active digitizer that I need to turn on or just use my finger. And these active ones are cool because they don't use the kind of, you know, physical, uh, the, the, the physical mesh or rubber that simulate a fingertip. They do it electronically to the tip. It's, it's actually a pretty cool piece of tech. We sell both. So they're very nice. Um, yeah. So if you do want to do note taking on this, uh, I'm writing upside down, but you totally can. Yeah, so I mean, the ink pad color could like double as uh, a rudimentary like digital note taking device That's for right. like 
you know, it's not going to have all the bells and whistles as like the remarkable and stuff like that. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the UI on the top? Like, you know, what, what could we expect in the note taking experience there? Yeah, we did a video on this too. So if you guys want to see that a little bit more in depth, that is something you can check out. You do have a color palette of eight colors, one of which being the absence of color, which doubles as an eraser. I'll just hold this up. And one of which is black. So just the black. You do have no pressure sensitivity. So whether you press hard, Hard or lightly, it's going to be the exact same thing because it's your finger. You do have five different styles of thicknesses. I don't recommend one. It's just so thin. You can't really see what's happening. But if you are looking to go into some detail, you can do some pretty decent shading, but it's just far too small and it's just not as accurate. You do have your eraser as well. It is stroke eraser. So it's not going to just erase everything or erase the entire line. And you do have text as well. So you can box a certain range. You can go QWERTY, press enter, and QWERTY shows up on the screen. It should, oh, I didn't press enter. There's QWERTY on the screen. You can then go to the text augmentation and change that into regular bold italicize, any size you want or font style. And the only other thing you have is back, forward, and delete page entirely. Because again, this is a scribble app. It's used to make, you know, little rudimentary notes. It's not used to make your layers or clip art or anything like that. So it's very basic. And as we've shown you guys for the 10 minutes, the coloring app is pretty cool. It's just a paint bucket. So yeah, it's, it's good for kids. Like, so, absolutely. you know, if you want to keep your kid entertained, you know, you could, you know, there's, there's pages upon pages of like, you know, little coloring books and stuff that they could like do, you know, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's paint bucket or spray can. You can choose a spray can and just like dust. So if you want to like dust the clouds in blue and stuff, you can dust the background that that that's the extent of this it's not even as extensive as paint but it is nice that they had it and pocketbook a couple generations back started to include scribble on even their most basic of e-readers for the most part and color on any obviously you know color enabled device so the color or the um the ink pad color so that's very nice and no to answer all your questions that keep coming in there is no apps on this one in fact this is the only and don't worry about where it says uh, where it actually says apps, those are apps in the form of application, but they're catered to just this device. You can't download Kindle. You can't download anything else. This is what it is. Or when they push an update, maybe new ones will come. Uh, if someone said, um, is it already good enough for comic books? That is actually something that this thrives on. And look at that, that looks great. And to be completely honest, it looks better in person than it does on this camera. It looks fantastic. This is just a one piece um, uh, manga we put on here and it, it looks so good. You can use the physical page turn buttons. You can pinch and zoom. You can use your finger on the screen. Color content when it comes to comics looks very, very good. And this is something they got right. And obviously static images like this just look great on it. Let's see how um, web comics look on it. Does this a what? Uh, a what it, web comics? Does it? Can you open up the browser on it? I can. Yes, I think. Oh yeah, Pocketbook is one of those guys that always uh, uh, turns the um, Wi-Fi off, kind of like uh, Kobo. They 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 turn that off every once in a while. I mean, uh, web web comics are going to look the same because, what? Well, I mean, I just showed you a full screen of a comic, so they're going to look identical. Uh, so search for questionable content. I can't type upside down. It's a web comic I follow. I want to see how this looks because it's like it's framed a little bit differently. So how this looks will probably how webtoons actually look too. Just took me to Google for some reason. I didn't type in Google. And sorry, it was questionable what? Content. Okay. I didn't actually touch anything. It's kind of spazzing out right now. This is not indicative of everyone's experience. It could just be a little blip. Okay. Questionable. Con. 
intent. Um, and if you guys are asking, yes, Pocketbook is actually one of the slowest color e-readers on the market. That's not a that's not a, a diss to Pocketbook. It's just simply they're not as power hungry as Onyx and everyone else's. So naturally, it's just not going to be as spec powerhouse as the other guys. Yeah, and like this is no like more a... evident than the high sense that's going to come out. Yeah, so this is like a dual core processor, uh, like one gig of RAM, uh, whereas with a lot of the Android ones, they're using like quad core to like deca core, three to four gigs of RAM. So this is like a standard like web comic. So as you can see, like it's, you know, you're browsing like on the web and uh, like on the PC sort of like, this is sort of how it looks. So, and this is sort of just like done with like Adobe Illustrator. So you can kind of see that like, you know, each each comic is just like one or two frames or whatever. So, um, you know, how it looks is sort of how webtoons and stuff would like look on this too. Yeah. Yeah, the colors definitely shine through on this um, this reader, and it is it, it's the best color reader on the market right now. There are other readers that do more, but they just don't look as good. They they don't look as good. The Big Me's too big, and the last generation of Kaleido is just uh, underachieving. This is the one you're gonna want, honestly. The this latest generation of Ian Kaleido two that's going to have uh, you know cell phone applications, big note taking applications, and everything in between. This is these are the ones that this is the one that looks the best. I mean, you can see it for yourself. It looks great. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, one of the advantages on the ink pad color is that it actually has physical page turn buttons. That's all right. of the all of the Android ones, like um, none of them have physical page turn them. buttons. You actually can only turn pages or interact with the screen uh, with your fingers. So swipes, taps, gestures. You can actually hold this with one hand, read an ebook, and just like flip the page to like the next page. Yeah, um, I'm obviously upside down because uh, Zoom won't let us rotate the uh, camera. Um, so, yeah, it's just this is the current setup we have. But, uh, yeah, so to answer all of your guys' questions, if you're just joining us again, because it has been a little bit of time, black and white e-reading is a little bit diminished on this, but that's not necessarily why you're buying this. You're buying this because you know this is color and you want to take advantage of that. So when you do look at color content, it looks so good. And this again is our um, baseball PDF we use across all platforms because it is considered a constant. We never change this, but we change the device we use it on. That way we keep it consistent. This is the best this PDF has ever looked. You know, on any of the devices we've done, this one just looks so crisp, so clean. And uh, I remember the first time we used the eye reader, we were like, oh, his hat's blue because we never we never actually saw this in color before, aside from a couple tablets. But yeah, this is this is a great device. It really is. It's not again, it's it's not the fastest, and we know that Pocketbook's never been about quick you know, spec powerhouse performance. They've been about international international compatibility. There's so many languages on this device. All you have to do is go to the settings at the top here and it should be something on languages right here. There are a ton of different languages. You have keyboard layouts, you have speech synthesis. Look at all these languages and they have different scripts too. So they have Chinese scripts. They have, I'm not sure if that's Hebrew or that's Arabic, but they do have Arabic scripts. They have Russian scripts and they just have everything in between. So it doesn't matter where you're located. You don't need a weird, you know, Ukraine phone number to log into this or anything. It's just get up and go. You can just skip across all the setup processes, not even use Wi-Fi and just sideload content into this all day long. And it still works beautifully. You know, one of the big advantages, like, you know, say, like we've mentioned some cons that, you know, it's a, it's just a dual core processor, yeah. one gig of RAM. So it's not going to be as snappy as some of the Android ones, but you have to look at the cost. The Big Me is snappy and robust, but it's like a thousand dollars. Right. You know, and that's going back to what we were talking about. We have the Wacom layer, the color filter away, the touch screen, the screen protector, the glass screen. There's all these things that have to be sized perfectly. And this needs to be fast to run all that. It's like a thousand dollars right here. Seriously. Yeah. Right. So the pocketbook color, which was the last Ink. generation, yeah. six yeah. inch, it was 
199. That's insane. This, this one that we're showing you today is only $319. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is actually the uh, the E8 Kalito 2 generation, the most right. affordable oh. color but device you can buy. Even the High Sense A7CC, which we're going to be review, reviewing soon. This is that's like yeah. over, I think, like five hundred and twenty nine dollars, five hundred and ninety nine dollars. It, it's, it's it's expensive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there isn't a lot of Kalito two devices out yet. It's like the high sense A7CC, this ink pad color and, and the big uh, me B1 Pro. And, and there's uh, a, yeah, there's a seven point eight, but it's not actually released yet. And we've asked big me for a sample and they're like, yeah, it's not it's not really out yet it's just like there's some listings on like some chinese websites and there's like some chinese review sites that are on yuku or you know baidu they have some videos but it's not actually out yet it's it's still right on the cusp but but yeah there's only there's only three so yeah it's very color is very new color came out you know 12 year. years ago but it, it was just you know with triton and whatever fujitsu's proprietary tech they were using before triton whatever it wasn't good color was terrible. and it was all really expensive it oh was dude like remember it? 799 dollars yeah it's like a thousand dollars for an attack jetbook color to you like canadian once it landed um yeah uh color is very very new this recent kaleido generation it's very new it all it, it's barely been like 12 months 13 months since the, these have really been in production and it, it's moving quickly and everything's proceeding much quicker than you know in the grand scheme of things it's happening very fast but uh yeah there's still a little bit of time to go i personally think the high sense is going to be the one that's going to perform the best because it's going to have a tight density screen and it has the best specs and the biggest name backing it. High sense. Yeah, it's like out of all of the core processor, the six gigs of RAM. It's like if anything is going to be like a high performance that's gonna Android be device with like a huge battery, it's going to be the A7CC. So you know, that has to perform better. And like, you know, even just the black and white generation from the previous generation or like the A5 uh, CC Pro or whatever, that right. was, that performed really well, you know, like that phone that came out last year. Right. So uh, given that like the specs have basically doubled from the previous generation of Cleto 1 to Cleto 2 smartphones, uh, you know, I'm excited to see how that performs, like against like maybe this one and the big me, you know, we're, we're going to have to basically see does processing power and RAM dramatically influence the performance of an e-ink screen? You know, a lot of people are going to be wondering about that. You'd figure that, you know, an octa core versus a single core uh, processor. Is that a night and day performance when it comes to e-ink? Well, you're going to have to, you know, wait for our comparisons to see. That's right. And if we look at an example, it's not always about how fast your device is. If we look last year, the year before, the uh, company out of China again called Whiskey sent us their sample. It was a DecaCore processor note-taking e-reader. The highest specs you would ever see. We did a video on it. And it was absolutely terrible. It was slow. It was unrefined. And it was just a terrible experience. A slower device that has been refined over a decade can actually be better than a DecaCore processor you throw at it just because you think you want higher specs. Uh, our last question came in and says, are, if you were to do mostly black and white regular e-reading with the occasional full color, is this ready? And how bad is the black and white? You can see right here, the black and white is better on Kaleido 2 than it has ever looked on Kaleido 1. And if you do the occasional color, like you see here, it'll be color. So to answer your question, if you are wanting an entry into color, please skip over Kaleido 1. It, it's, it's nothing compared to what we're looking at now with this recent generation of different devices. So skip over the first gen, grab this gen, and just kind of go with this because this, you know if you're a little bit unsure maybe wait a month and a bit to see what other devices are coming out because really this is realistically this is the only one you're not going to buy the big me for 1200 bucks unless you're really into like architecture with absolutely necessity of having color legends yeah i mean yeah, you're not the big me b1 pro is the only like color 
e-ink device that's a dedicated digital note-taking like pad but there's there's too many pros like you know are too many cons like yeah. against it in my in my impression uh basically just to even turn the device on you need like a chinese phone number so it's like uh, and you need like someone that actually could enter a code from that Chinese phone number. So it's like, like two step verification. Yeah. So it's yeah. like already, you know, unless you actually know someone that lives in China, you can't even turn it on and use it. So it's like, who's, you know, I mean, that that's, that's, that's a very big negative, but on the plus side that, that there is like services that will like, you know, for a fee that will give you a phone number and do two-step verification for you. I mean, there's always a market for people that need Chinese phone numbers and, and two-step verification, whether it's like through ba Badu or Migu and like stuff like that. There's people always wanting to do it. So yeah. if we find a, like a, a, a good quality like list that you could like do to pay for it in order to do it, like you just need it to initially do like the, the registration of the device. And once you do that, you never have to like enter any phone numbers or anything like that ever again. So yeah. it's just the initial setup process. So uh, that's just something to bear in mind, you know, whereas with this, uh, you just turn it on and immediately start using it. So, you know, it doesn't become as easy of it. So yeah, with the current generation Clito 2, I think the ink pad, color just makes the most sense so if you're looking for something that could take notes that could be used for the kids to like draw to read manga comics pdf files ebooks webtoons web comics i mean this does it all and it's a 7.8 screen so it's much larger than the previous generation cleto one which was only on six inch screens that that was the only one or like smaller phones but like it didn't go beyond six inches. Whereas with Kalito 2, it could go from like five inches to 10.3 inches. That that's the range. But from we from all of our tests so far, 7.8 is like the sweet spot on color, like on images. They're not really blurred. You get like tremendous resolution. And I think it's because any e-reader that has a black and white display of 300 ppi is gonna look good with hundred ppi of color. So uh, and, and don't forget, like, you know, what you see on the screen even now, it's not like the whole screen is color. It, it's just like the book covers are color. So given that those are basically glorified icons, it, the, if you were to look at this in person, you would see tremendous color, like variability. Uh, you can't really see it like, you know, on Zoom. You have to like look at our review video of this because it's actually shot in 4K. So you can actually do it. Whereas our totally. webcams are like uh, 1080p. Uh, so you can this see- This is just for showcasing purposes. So you guys have control over what you want to see. But the, the videos we do on reviews are far more uh, higher quality. So you can get a good idea. This is as best we can do to reach people in all corners of the world. Yeah. So, you know, from all the tests that we've done in studio, but that we haven't uploaded yet, this is probably the one to buy. So uh, it's available on our store, goodyreader.com slash shop. And um, it's one of our top best sellers, like right now. Uh, I think yeah. we've sold like hundreds of them since oh, the man. release has been, you know, there, it's only become available since the 15th of like this month. So we've sold like hundreds of them from like the 15th to like what? What's the date today even? 2020th, I think. Yeah. So it's it's only been With, a couple of days. Yeah. So in five days, yeah. we've sold hundreds of them. So uh, I think it's because like we, we sell them actually cheaper than what Pocketbook sells them for. Um, and also it's the only choice. So it's supply and demand. People say, I want Kaleido too. Well, you don't have a choice. You have this or nothing <laughs> so basically yeah that's why i was saying if if you are on the fence wait next month because the a7 uh cc will be coming out which is a cell phone you don't have to use it as a cell phone you can just use it as a 6.7 i think inch reader so you can always do that that's that's totally fine i actually do have a couple of questions here or a couple of things to say um yeah so we we touched on the black and white content uh someone says i'm excited by this device i already bought one from your store well, there you go see someone just said they bought one from our store thanks uh, for your support said, yeah absolutely um 
and, and another thing about these is that they're available. They're not like in, they're not in concept. They're not in like chip shortages. These are shipping. We already shipped, I think out of like the 195 we sold, we shipped like 116 of them. And uh, every day, just like 30 more dispatched. Just it's like on a rotation because there's a lot of parcels going out, but uh, yeah. yeah. And we ship them like through like DHL or like DHL e-commerce. So it's yeah, like very, we're, we're, sh yeah. we're shipping them through like, for the vast majority of them that we're shipping out is through like official couriers that you know and trust. Unfortunately, if you live in a place uh, which we do have uh, beautiful customers there as well from like Qatar and Bahrain and stuff, we have to use alternative methods because, you know, shipping a, a little tiny thing to Bahrain costs us about $145. So uh, we usually do a little bit more of an economical, but we only ship air. We don't ship any boats or anything. We've learned our lesson 12 years ago. Uh, someone says, can I get an e-reader for free? I'm a student, please, please. Um, I, I, we, we absolutely love our users and we appreciate all your support, but you guys got to stop saying that. Um, we get mil tens of millions of people that come to our site per month and, you know, millions of views on YouTube. If you want a free e-reader, enter our contest and just do it the right way and just give everybody a fair chance we are more than generous with our con with our discounts our flea market our our constant contests we give away a lot of stuff we cannot just send you free things we get this every day i'm terribly sorry out of the millions of people that see us can't just give away free stuff to everyone so that's why we do our contests that's why we do giveaways everyone has a fair shot uh, someone yeah. says, I love the design of that device. You know what? That is a good point. I, I love that you said that. I think I said that earlier on, but Pocketbook looks good. They use a Show us the back of the device. Yeah. They use a double bezel design. They have the bezel around the unit, but they wrap that around with a, a second bezel that, that, that sandwiches the physical page turn buttons that looks great, but still has that retro feel of the physical buttons because only old devices use physical buttons. They've managed to keep it modern while doing that. And that bezel wraps around into the back. And this is a, depends on the, it's got flake in the paint, which means it's going to capture light differently. Let's just get a focus on this. There we go. So if you tilt it this way, you're getting an aluminum look. If you tilt it this way, you're getting a copper look. And that's because in the paint, they're not using a mat. They're using a flake, which means it basically has glitter inside. It's a very nice looking device. They constantly win red dots. So uh, something to be said, it, it, it's just a great looking device as well. It may not be the fastest like we've touched on, but man, is it just a great device overall? Yeah, I mean, you got to look at like, like the Kindle, like bring that Kindle back in the shot. Like that's the standard oh, yeah. reader. It's oh, like this, all, dude, this, it's you all know black, this you know, it's yeah. cookie you know, cutter. You know, when you're making cookies and you're just like thunk and you make your little shortbread cookie, that that's this. And no, no, no discredit to Kindle. Kindle is the greatest e-reader of all time, both in like reputation and sales figures. This is the greatest e-reader of all time. When you talk about e-reader, it is synonymous with Kindle. It's like jacuzzi and hot tub. Um, this is the greatest e-reader, but it just looks so boring. You just sunk. Oh, I'm done. Okay. Here's my million dollar idea, billion dollar idea, whatever. Th this had some R and D into it, you know, companies like, you know, Supernode and, and Guido and, and companies that take the extra mile to do design features, you know, Bokeen, they make the things look like the diva looks like a D, you know, and, and it had like a, it looked like a book. It, all those little things are great. This just is, oh, well, you know, I, I bought my Kindle. I'm going to read my book I'm gonna download digital content. Okay, great. Fantastic. Yeah. This more, more companies than not do not put a lot of time and effort in That's the right. actual design of the e-reader it's like you know what peter mentioned it's like you can count on one hand how many models and companies actually like put a little bit of effort into the construction and yeah. like the the aesthetics of the design you know and most people don't so that's the one thing I like about Pocketbook. Some of their e-readers look a little bit cookie cutter, but for the most part, you know, anything that you would spend over like 150 bucks, you know, from like the touch lux and up, you know, they, they implement design principles that make them stand out in a crowd, which, you know, um, some people care about just design in general. I know I do, you know, I, I, right. I really dig when e-readers are doing something different than just like 
an all black front and an all black back. That's right. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Look at that. I know that notes keep your notes, but it actually keeps every individual color coded highlight. Look at that. You see, you learn something new every minute. That's great. And so what the notes does is actually reference all the things you've made a note on. So when you click it, it goes to that note. I didn't know it actually color codes in the notes section. That's that's fantastic. This is, yeah, in terms of us trying to sell you on this and just objectively, because we sell everyone. Honestly, if you are looking color, this is the one. That, that, that's it. <laughs> There's nothing else. <laughs> you got to wait for the high sense or you spend, you know, you got deep pockets and you go with the big me and you get yourself some note taking. But yeah, man, the color is great. It really is. It's it's tried and tested. They've been in business for what, like 13 years or something. It, it's a great device. Yeah. So uh, on next week's show, we're going to like look at, I, I believe, the big me unless something right. better comes along in oh. the meantime. We so, might even do a big me high sense combo party if they both come out, if we get our high sense in time. Yeah, I mean, I would rather do the high sense phone over the big oh, me absolutely. just because, like, it, it, the high sense phone would be like the uh, the pocketbook. They appeal to a much wider audience than just right. you know the big me is all in Chinese. Like, it, it's basically for a Chinese audience, but it is you know it, it's basically what we're going to show you pretty well is like digital note taking. How how PDF files look on a bigger screen, how ebooks look on a bigger screen. It, it's less about this is just a pure Chinese e-reader, but we're gonna look at is it as it as like a a tech demo, like um like a like a tech demo of te you know any future ten point threes that come out will be similar in terms of like how a PDF will look, how note taking will That's look, right. how reading an ebook being like, you know, software might change from device to device, but the core functionality will remain the same. So that that's that's where we're at. So yeah. Um little bit of a plug first actually and then I'll let you wrap it up, Mike. This Kindle that we've been showing you uh, this and this this is a nice scratch free uh, uh, leather table here. Uh, this is right now. This is what we just talked about giving stuff away for free. This one is available for free. It is mint condition. We literally asked Amazon to send this to us to do one video when we did the thousand dollar versus hundred dollar e-reader. Contest is happening right now as we speak. All you have to do is go to our channel and you will see that we do have a free e-reader contest happening right now. The winner draw is on the 28th. So you do have seven or eight more days, depending on where you are in the world. This is yours for free. Just go there, subscribe, enter, and you can win it. And if you're so keen, you can become a VIP member and your one entry counts for 10 entries. And that's really cool because it, it multiplies your chances of winning times 10. Go get your Kindle. Uh, yeah, you can <laughs> join us for a little as a dollar ninety nine a month. That's so, right. Uh, you can do that by clicking join underneath any of our videos and just click the tier that uh, you can afford. Uh, we appreciate everyone that does it, and uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, checking out our live stream on the pocketbook inkpad color. If you want to see a comprehensive un boxing and review video we have that on our youtube channel right now uh, i've also did a very comprehensive written review uh that's on our carousel on goodyreader.com so you can like see a written review and like 30 different pictures and you know uh the rating and pros and cons on our website so uh everything that you've seen here today was just sort of like bonus coverage so yeah. we're going to wrap it up for today. So for goodyreader 